What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com. We're finishing up our coverage on the Motorola Droid 3 from Verizon Wireless. We already put out videos showing the unboxing, benchmarks, camera features, and the gaming performance. Well, in this video, we'll be going over the rest of the software. So let's begin by first turning off the display. I know that's a bit backwards for a review, but the reason why I want to do that is to show you that it has the famous screen off animation that was introduced with uh, Gingerbread. So some gingerbread devices have this feature, some don't, but when you turn it off, you get this screen off animation that's almost like you're turning off an old computer monitor or a television. And obviously that has no practical functionality, but it's just really cool and uh, gives you a nice transitional element to when you're turning off your display. So do that one last time. And let's move on here. We have our new lock screen. This wasn't available in the uh, Droid X2, but now you have it on the Droid 3. We have a toggler to switch between sound profiles, and then you can unlock your device here by swiping over. So here we have a set of five home screens. And the first thing I like to do when I get a new device is to test out uh, how it performs when you're swiping between the screens uh, because many of these manufacturers like to slap on their own uh, user interface or launcher as Motorola does with this interface. So let's just swipe back and forth to see if it slows down or has any lag. As you can see it's very snappy and very smooth. Now, I'm not sure if it's that's because the uh, dual core processor but I'm actually thinking that Motorola has improved their launcher uh, it used to be called Moto Blur. They're moving away from that now. Uh, they don't really have a name for it right now, I don't think. Uh, but before, before it was called Moto Blur, and it didn't really have a good reputation because it would sort of lag the device. But as you can see here, Motorola is working hard. Uh, there's plenty of eye candy now, and the performance is pretty good. So back to the eye candy. As you switch between home screens, you can see that there's a bit of a, a glare effect that's splashed onto the widgets and apps. So that lasts for a few seconds and then it flattens out the image and goes back to its neutral state. So nice eye candy there. Also, if you swipe up on your dock, you get an overview of all five home screens and that's done with a nice little animation. You can switch between home screens easily. If we go to this contacts widget, you can actually swipe that down to expand to all your favorite contacts. And as you can see, you can collapse that right away as well. So you don't really have to dive into the app. You can just access all of that right from your home screen. All right, so also if you swipe between the screens, you can see there's a little bit of an animated effect there where uh, the widgets and apps sort of offset. I don't know if you can see that too well, but there you go. And Let's go ahead and check out the notification bar. So I don't have any notifications right now, but this is where all of your notifications uh, would be at. Uh, if you have multiple notifications, you can actually clear out one by one or you can clear all at once. Also, when you uh, pull down the shade, you can see there's a fade uh, in and out effect for when you're pulling the shade up and down. Very nice. No advanced features here, unfortunately. I would like to see some uh, quick togglers for uh, frequently used wireless communications uh, but it's okay that you don't have it because not all devices are going to have that. So if we move down here we can tap and hold on the home button and we get a list of most recently used applications. Now most Android devices are only going to show you uh, the eight most recently used apps but here we have a lot more. Uh, you can see there's room for plenty more apps down here so it really dives deep into your history. So I'm glad that uh, Motorola has done that just in case you want to access more apps there. If you look down here, we have our bottom dock bar. Now we already have some icons set up here. There are some apps. I have a dialer, my messaging application, and the browser along with the app tray. Uh, this is not set in stone. You can actually customize these apps. So if you want to switch out the browser, you can just tap and hold let go of it and it's going to load up a list of all your applications so if you want to maybe put a calendar in its place you can do that just as easily bam right there you can switch it out so I'm glad you don't have to uh, use a predetermined dock that the manufacturer has set I hate when manufacturers uh, sort of make you use a, 
a fixed layout, but you can customize it, so that's very nice. Well, let's go back to the left side here and start giving a look at the multiple widgets that we have available to us. So we have a bookmarks widget. I'll go ahead and tap and hold on that to show you another feature. You can see there's some more eye candy. It's floating around with a little 3D animated effect. Also, if you move it down over another widget, it'll gladly move out of the way so you can change the layout easily. And you can actually resize widgets as well. That looks a little weird, make, maybe make that a little bit larger. But that's nice a nice feature to have because sometimes you don't want a widget taking up the whole screen so you can easily resize it. So while we're here, let's go ahead and open up the browser. Uh, I was hoping that would load up so you can show you uh, how it performs when it loads web pages, but I guess I'll have to click on a link. So here's smartktai.com. Let's go ahead and scroll up and down. We'll zoom in and out as well, see how that performs. Pretty good, pretty good. And one thing I noticed right away is you can actually zoom in and pan at the same time. So as you can see, you can get really precise on where you want to go. Hold on. Let me hold the device down while I do this. There we go. So you can get really focused in on where you want to go. And also, if you want the text to reflow, you just double tap on the screen. And there you go. You have all of your text in a vertical list style. All right, so let's click on a link here so I can show you how it loads up and renders. Also, I want to show you some flash content, so I'll click on a recent game review. I actually demoed this on the Droid 3, but here we have a web page loading up. All right, so it looks like it's about done here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. And we'll go ahead and play that video see if that's running smoothly. Now obviously YouTube videos you'll probably want to run in What's your up, dedicated YouTube app but let's see how it runs in the browser. Alright so you can see it moving out around a little bit and you can see even if I move the browser around everything is still moving. Let's wait for my hand to come in on the video for a second. Alright, so let me, even if I zoom in and out, you can see my hand is still moving around there. It's a very good performance, even with flash content loaded up there. So, I'll go ahead and jump out of here, enough with the browser. Moving on, here's a little news widget, an RSS reader. So we have a 3D carousel for all the news stories for... Uh, any websites that you've loaded up here, smartktai.com. You can get an app list if you want to get more of those. All right, so we'll move back out of there and move on. I already showed you the animated effect with the contacts. Over here we have a uh, Google search bar that comes standard on all Android devices. Some quick togglers down here for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and uh, airplane mode. Let's see what else is here. Mobile hotspot, if you pay for that feature on Verizon, you can tether your device wirelessly with more devices. Moving on, here's a combo date and a time widget. Unfortunately, nothing happens when you tap on the date or the calendar. It would be nice if that launched the uh, alarm application and the uh, calendar application, but it doesn't do that. So let's go ahead and move on here. We have... I guess we'll go to our email app. And the main feature I want to show you here is that it does allow you to multi-select emails and bulk delete or move them. Very nice. And let's click on an email just so we can see how it performs, how it looks like. We have quick buttons to move in and out of emails. Back out of there. The Android market. When I first loaded the device and went to the market, it downloaded the new and new look Android market. So you don't have to worry about waiting for that to push out. You have it right away here. All right, back out of there. If you want to get a look at the dialer, very blue theme dialer here, recent contacts and favorites text messaging application. Unfortunately, I don't have any text, so you don't get to see it. Uh, know that you do have 
uh, a little differentiation between you and the person you're talking to with these uh, different colored bubbles when there are conversations listed here. So we'll just open up a text message and I want to show you the keyboard. So two different software keyboards available to us on the Droid 3. We have the multi-touch keyboard right here. Very good for regular touch input. But if you want to get a little fancy, you can change that out for the swipe keyboard. So most of you probably know what swipe is, but for those of you who don't, it allows you to basically swipe out words without lifting your finger off the screen. And this is how it works. So we'll just do a simple uh, test here. This is a test. All right, so it came out really quickly and it's efficient as well. Nice keyboard. It's always nice when swipe comes included with the device so you don't have to worry about trying to get it through their beta or maybe when they start selling it, you won't have to purchase it. So we'll go back home and what else do we have here? We have our calendar. All right. Anything else here? Nope. Let's go ahead and move on. I already showed you the calendar. Here's the appointments widget. Here's a weather widget. So you can have multiple cities, sort of the same 3D carousel as the RSS uh, reader as before. You can switch between extended and detailed forecast and then access the AccuWeather website for more information down here. If you tap and hold, you can actually Let's try that again. I thought you can res okay, here we go. You can resize it. There we go. And you'll get a little different look depending on the size of the widget. Moving on, we have a gallery that you can add uh, different types of websites like Picasa, Flickr, and all those uh, image hosting websites. Just adding a social network for a, a stream. Go to add account. We have Facebook, Flickr, LinkedIn, MySpace, PhotoBucket, Picasa, Twitter, and YouTube gallery. Let's see what else. That's about it for the home screens and widgets. If you tap and hold on the screen, of course, you can add widgets, shortcuts, folders, and change out the wallpaper. Let's check out the list of widgets we have available to us. I'll go through this a little slow here. All right, and finally, let's pull up the app tray, get a look at that. You have two buttons up at the top. This one over here allows you to filter and sort. You have all recent and downloaded apps as long as your as well as your Verizon wi Verizon wireless apps, and then you can even add your own group by tapping on the plus button over there. Here's a button to quickly jump to the Android market. Let's go back out of here. Oops, pull the app tray back up. And this is a side scrolling app tray. And it has that 3D effect for when you're transitioning. So let's just get a quick look at what's in here. We have an alarm application, just a basic alarm app, Amazon Kindle, Blockbuster, Google Books. So you do have some bloatware on here. Uh, you can remove some of those, which I'll do in a second, but not all can be removed. Uh, but it's always nice when you can remove some of that unnecessary software. Here's a calculator. Let's see, calendar, we already looked at that. Camera and camcorder. I actually did an in-depth review of the camera feature, so be sure to check out that video. I'll post that in the link uh, as a link in the description below. Uh, city link, city ID, contacts, dialer, DLNA, downloads, Dropbox. I actually installed that after the fact email you have a file manager here if we go back gallery we actually looked at this uh, before in the camera features video but there's another look get that little stacked effect gmail google search let's golf too let's actually uninstall that to show what that looks like all right asks us for confirmation and then bang it's uninstalled and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So let's continue on here. Uh, music, navigation, so you have Google Navigation, of course, NFL Mobile, Nova is pre installed, 
Um, some of these I already added onto the device. Skype, Slacker, you have a built-in task manager. So if an app is acting up, you can actually come in here and kill that off easily by selecting it. And you get the option to end the apps or auto end them as well. Jump back, you have some Vcast apps for media. Looks like there's a tasks application. Voice command, voice search. VZ Navigator if you want another option besides Google Nav, YouTube, and ZumoCast. So that was the software side of the Motorola Droid 3 from Verizon Wireless. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.